in my uh, family, unsaved portions of my family in your prayers. And um, also we have a list of names on our church programs, prayer list that we need to uh, keep in prayer. Yes. Amen. I ask that you pray for a friend of mine, um, Margie Monroe. Um, I talked to her today and she was in a rehab center for, this is her third heart attack. I ask that you pray for her and she's having spasms in her back. And also she says she's had, she has cataracts and she can barely see. So if you can keep her and her family lifted up. Amen. We welcome those on Facebook, if out there in Facebook, if you have uh, anyone you'd like to put on a prayer list, you can just type it in the comments and we'll make sure we get it on our prayer list. And thank the Lord. All right. Any other prayer requests? I would say we should pray without ceasing. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for your loving kindness, your multitudes of tender mercies. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord, this day we've never seen and never see again. But Father, as we stand before you right now, we thank you for our daily bread on today, Father. Thank you for your protection. Thank you, O oh God, for the portion of strength that we have in our mortal bodies, Lord, but most of all, we thank you for your spirit, Lord, that dwells in us. And Father, we ask you right now, continue to empower us, Lord, to endure this race. And Father, we ask you right now, knowing that you are a mighty God, you're wonderful, you're a counselor, you're everlasting, Father, you are the Prince of Peace. Oh, God, we stand before you because hallowed be thy name. Oh, God, you are higher than any name on heaven or in the earth, Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for uh, blessing us uh, to be able to come together, Lord, on one accord, Lord, in one place, that we lift up these names before you, Lord. Petition heaven, oh, God, for every uh, remedy, every solution, every healing, whatever the need is, Father. Oh, God, we ask you right now, have earthly interference, Lord, from heaven. And Father, we ask you right now to move upon all the names that's been called out. Troy Coley, oh God, Sandra Cahill, Lord, uh, Jamari Thompson, Terry Dinkins, the Dinkins family, Father, Artway Bailey, the Edwards family, the Dotsons family, uh, oh God, the uh, Isaac family, the Melton family, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you to touch, oh God, the Presley family, Father. Oh, God, everyone, Lord, I may not be able to call by name, Lord, but you know them, oh, God, in detail. You know every strand of hair on their head, oh, God. And, Lord, we ask you right now to move, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. We see them shut, uh, sick and shut in list, Lord. You know every name that's on that list. You know the the need, Lord. We ask you to touch the bereaved families everywhere, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we bind, oh God, the hands of the enemy right now. We rebuke him right now. We resist him right now. Father, you can do all things, Lord. Oh God, we thank you right now. We stand before you, Lord, just knowing, oh God, by faith, oh Lord, we've come this far. And Father, I ask you right now, move, oh God, even on the uh, men's prep breakfast on this week, Lord. Lord, we ask you to move upon every service, Lord. Oh, God, even on TMP on tomorrow night, the prayer call on tomorrow night, have your way in our lives, Lord. Oh, God, you said in your word, seek ye first the kingdom of God yeah, and yeah. your righteousness, and Hallelujah. all these things shall be added unto us, Lord. Yes, Lord, God. we just ask more of your spirit, Lord. Oh, God, we ask you for more of your spirit, Lord. Oh, God, that it takes over the mortal man, Lord, and it directs yes, us in the way that you want us to go, Lord. Order our steps, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to move upon uh, all the hospitals and nursing homes, Cadia, Lord. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, Lord, we ask you to move upon the youth of this nation, Lord, of the world, Lord. Protect them, oh, God. Give them, 
oh God, the right mind to have to serve you, Lord, while they're young, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to move right now in the name of Jesus. We ask you right now, Lord, to uh, open up our eyes, ears, and understanding in the Bible study on today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you to touch the Taylor family, Lord. Uh, touch a uh, young lady, uh, Margie, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Missionary Pat's uh, friend, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Continue, Lord, to show us the way. And Father, if you show us the way, Lord, and we uh, keep our hands in the master's hand, you will direct us to all truth. Lord, let your word be a flame, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that the word that we hide in our heart, oh God, that we know not to sin against you, Lord. And Lord, when sin tries to beset us, Lord, when temptation comes, Lord, you said you give us a way of escape. And Father, we just thank you right now. We bless you right now in the name of Jesus for that way of escape. Lord, move, oh God, upon our church, Lord. Continue, Lord, to send people in, Lord. Continue to have our uh, church congregates, our brothers and sisters in Christ to help win souls to the kingdom, Lord. That's our job, Lord. That is our primary reason, Lord. You left this great commission upon us, Lord, before you went and sat on the right hand of the Father. Oh, Lord, we're supposed to be compelling them to come in, as the word says, Lord. And I thank you for those who are not afraid, oh God, and those who may be afraid, Lord, give them what they need to have the courage just to invite someone to church. Give them the courage, Lord, to just speak a word into someone's life. Give them the courage, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let them not think that they need to uh, have a great understanding of the Bible right away, Lord, the new converts. Let them just continue, Lord, to thirst after righteousness. You will fill them, oh God, In the name of Jesus, you will give them the understanding, Lord. You'll give them the understanding because your word said you would, Lord. And Lord, let them rightly divide the word of truth. Let them continue in the walk, oh Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you and we bless you. We glorify you and we magnify you. Lord, if it had not been for you on our side, oh God, we had been consumed by the enemy. So we thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. Now, Lord, have your way, oh God. Continue to have your way in our lives, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Continue, Lord, to let us thrive, oh God, on your word, Lord. Let it penetrate our hearts, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Let us not be afraid, oh God. You have not given us the spirit of fear, but uh, love, power, and a sound mind, Lord. Yes. Father, we ask you right now, Lord, just continue, Lord, oh God, to allow us to do uh, what your word say, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if we be willing and obedient, you allow us to eat the fat of the land. And Father, we know, Lord, that you are the good shepherd and we shall not want everything we need, oh God, even the desires of our heart, you will grant, Lord, according to your will and your purpose for our lives. So we thank you, Lord. Continue to bless and keep us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name. Come on, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus Hallelujah. Name. Yes, Hallelujah. yes. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. God has been thank so you. good to us. Man, I don't have no complaints. Work has been hard. Uh, it's, you know, I, I used to talk about how hard it is to work full-time and pastor. Uh, I, I'm not a part-time pastor. I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm not a part-time, I can't be a part-time pastor because I'm surely not a part-time child of God. And and don't let nobody label you. I remember when I told a gentleman that the Lord had called me to preach, and, and that was many years ago, and I remember him saying, so you're going to quit the job as my uh, manager at, at uh, work? So everybody has their own perspective on what that means when the Lord called you. As long as you understand and know what it means when he called you. And when he called me, um, he didn't tell me to leave the job. In fact, he told me, I have you there for a reason. And I believe that where I was at the time, I helped um, move the gospel in the way that I lived my life. I didn't wear a big old cross on my chest. I didn't have a a t-shirt that said, hey, I love Jesus. But people should see the light of God in us 
And we don't have to tell them. They already know because God will reveal himself in what we do and how we do things and how we treat people and how we work unto the Lord. There have been many a times I've complained about how the work was going. Even sometimes now I catch myself doing it. And I have to rebuke my own self because we are supposed to work unto the Lord and not unto man. We're yeah. doing it unto the Lord. And that way God will begin to uh, put favor in the eyes of those you work around, your coworkers, your managers, your, your uh, company owners, whoever it is, because when you have the favor of God upon your life, can't nobody, can't nobody stop you. Can't nobody stop you, but you. And we thank the Lord that, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say this. Then we're going to get into the Bible study, but look, can't nobody stop you, but you, and it would be foolish to try to stop the move of God in your life by, by defaulting to uh, what the flesh knows. The flesh knows how to sin. It's embedded. Didn't the Bible said we're born in sin, shaped in iniquity? So the, the flesh knows how to sin. Uh, and, but, but the spirit man also knows the things of God and, and what God uh, does, is not pleased with. So we have to be very, very um, careful to walk in the flesh. We can't help but walk in the flesh uh, from a natural standpoint. But what I'm saying is we should be dwelling in the things of God making sure that God is well pleased you know, and that one day we'll hear well done by good and faithful servant. We want to hear that. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going, we're going to need participation this evening. Participation. If you don't, if you don't uh, mean uh, when I, when I say amen, and if you don't <laughs> agree with it, don't say amen. Cause that's what that means. <laughs> so, um, any anybody have um, any praise reports? Praise reports. Yeah, I have a praise report, and and it, yes, I do. And uh, <laughs> my wife sitting back, and she know what it is because you because you know as as things are getting things prices are going up and everything. Yes, the Lord. Economy's going up is making things tight because we're on a fixed income. So we were discussing, I was like, you know, I was discussing, I was like, we're going to have to start stretching some things, you know, you know, because things are going up so we can stay within our, you know, stay within our means. And I made a suggestion and, and she was like, nope. I was like, uh, maybe I know, you know, we're giving, we're giving an awful lot in time. I said, maybe we just take a little bit, you know, take a little bit off that and take a little bit off this. No, nah, we're not touching ties, right? She said, "No, we're <laughs> gonna be okay." So she said, "We're gonna be, we're gonna be okay." Then all of a sudden, God knows, like I say, the, you know, increase came, you know, to make it that to make everything all right because turn around because I get I get I get I get uh from the military from the military I get um I'm, I'm getting you know disability from them. Gave me a forty percent increase, you know, from what I was getting. So you know, the increase, and then thank the then, Lord, Hallelujah. Then he gave me retro. He gave me retro. So I can say, God, God, God knows your needs, and He'll give it to you according to you. Amen. And so, because I was like, think, you no, know, I'm saying everything is going up except our finances. <laughs> except you know, so God will make a way. Lead you not. Yes, if, you, yes. if, if you be true to him, he will make a way for you. You know what I'm just saying? And it comes, it comes at an unexpected time when you think, like I say, you might be thinking, man, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I said, just give it to me. And like I said, my wife, she said, don't worry about it. We're not going to touch this. We're going to trust. And he will provide. And, he, and like I said, I, and he's making, he's continuing making a way for it. Like I said, you, you look for a little, he gives you a lot. He gives you abundance. Oh, open you up the windows of heaven, yes. That's why I was about to read the scripture. Uh, <laughs> well, I, just wanna say, I just want to say, I just want to say, I just want to say, you know, I, I think, I, like I said, I thank God, like I said, because I give him all the glory and all the praise because I'm telling you, you trust in him, he will not forsake you. You know what I'm saying? God is there with you to the end. Of, and I, like I said, I'm just like, 
wow. You know, like I say, all you can say is wow. When you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you don't know where it's going to come from, but you put your trust in God, God will like have you say, wow. Wow. I, I hope, I hope uh, that, that you repented. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They say he shouldn't even be thinking that out, Pastor. Right. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 <laughs> that that similar thing happened. I tell the story about first lady and I were really going through really rough uh, times. Uh, our family, and we didn't want to borrow money. It wasn't a pride thing. We had we knew we had to wait on the Lord, and we finally broke down. And I was like, you know. We, we can ask your father or something like that. And and uh, I don't remember the details, but anyway, we ended up asking <clears throat> her dad. And he was like, you know, I, I don't have it. And and uh, then I like, I, I know it was like seven days, 10 days later, God released money where we could pay off and catch up on everything and overflow, man. I had to repent. I had to repent to God. I was like, Lord, you told us to wait. You told me as the head to wait, and we didn't. And you're right. Sometimes well, what we see uh, is reality to us because that's what the flesh does. It, it fleshes, out, fleshes out things in the immediate uh, uh in the current, the, your current situation that you're not going to make it because we can't see past that point. But we have to understand to walk by faith and not by sight. We don't know how, that's the thing about faith. You don't know how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. You just know it's going to happen because God is on your side. You don't know how you're going to take care of all the bills. You don't know how uh, gas might be $6 a, a gallon. And everybody, I even, I filled up, I put a post, I said, I'm just saying, and it was a it was a blended message. I, I'm just saying, 415, I paid 70, 90. Things are going up, food's going up. Uh, so one of the things that I believe that God uh, was showing us through the pandemic, I'm giving I'm giving now now everybody's going back to work, right? Everybody's going, you know, most most people are going to work, but through that we had to learn that we could save money because we were forced to save money. We couldn't go out like we used to. We couldn't, some of us didn't drive to work. That wasn't the time to spend. That was the time to put away. Mm -hmm. and, and many people did not do that. Many people did not take the advantage of being a good steward and listening to God's word. Uh, you know, it's, it's like the statement, when it's dark, it's too late to work. We wait, we wait because we're afraid to move or we have to have it right now, you, and you, you know, so on and so forth. You, when you think about after God shows his, shows his hand, that's when we, we got to show up before. So that's only a natural thing that you went through. You know, don't beat yourself up. Don't don't feel bad. We all have been in that spot. Don't think you're gonna make it. Oh my gosh, how are we gonna pay this? Oh man, this sickness in my body. When is it gonna go away? Oh God, if we trust in Him, God will bring it to fruition, and God will He will heal whatever the situation is. So that that is anybody else got testimony? Thanks for sharing that, Deacon uh, Nate. Anybody else? Well, I got one. Last week, I was feeling so bad in my body, but I just kept pleading the blood of Jesus over the situation. I had to miss work. And one of the things I tell you, I don't like to miss work on certain jobs because when you get back, work don't wait for you. It, it, it won't take care of itself. I, I mean, it, it will wait for you, I meant to say. It will wait for you until you get back. And if you think somebody's going to pick up where you left off, forget about it. <laughs> um, so 
I got back to work uh, on Friday and um, a lot of things were piled up. A lot of things had happened. And what the enemy will trick, try to trick your mind with is like, see, you were out. It probably wouldn't have happened if you were here. And I had to rebuke the devil right away because think about it. It was going to happen whether I was there or not. Yep. And, and, so, and sometimes we we think we're, uh, what's that word? Inexpe uh, indispensable. But let me tell you something. Worry yourself on these jobs if you want. It, you know, and God and God uh, showed me that the work did not need to have me there. That's why God has more than just me there. So I had to I had to uh, uh, realize that God was sustaining me. He gave me rest while I was off. He gave me time to think. There was not a lot of the normal complexity. I was looking for the positive parts of me being sick. And sometimes that's what we have to do. Don't think about your situation being all bad. Think about what God is trying to show you. So I thank God that he allowed me to reflect on some things last week while I was out uh, where things weren't busy in my life during the, during the week. Sometimes we get so busy, we forget to, to uh, realize that these challenges come, but God is bringing us through them. God is bringing us through them. Yes, Lord. I just, I just want to tell you, I, I love God more than I loved him yesterday mm -hmm. because he keeps me. Uh, uh, just, just continue to, to press on, continue to stay on God, stay in God's word, stay on uh, your knees, continue to pray because God going to bring us through. Anybody believe that? Amen. Amen. He's going to bring, yeah. bring us through. <laughs> He's going to bring us through. We thank the Lord. All right. Well, I want you to have your Bibles out. Share some stuff with you on this evening. All right. Good to see everybody on. All right, let's talk about altar work. Uh, we thank the Lord. Uh, anybody want to help uh, help me teach this this evening? I'm going to ask some questions. You can add your two cents. We're going we're going to talk about altar work uh, at our church, and then general altar work uh, that happened and any signs of that in the in the uh, in the Bible in terms of working the altar altar. What does the altar, anybody, um, what, what is altar work? When you say altar work, what does that mean? Anybody? I mean, you, you, there's no wrong or right answer. What do you think it means? I think it means uh, assisting with uh, people that's coming up for prayer. Okay. Anybody else? What do we do? What's part of the, I'm, I'm trying, what I'm trying to ask, what they, it, it's the way we serve those who are in need, definitely. Um, and we, and what else do we do? Altar call. Come on, y'all help. We actually minister to those that, that come up. We minister to those that come up. Yeah. Encourage them. Encourage them with, um, you know, with their, 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 the lifestyle that they're living and converting over from a sinner to becoming a child of God, assisting okay. them with their. You're getting, you're getting close to what specifically I wanted everyone. Pray. Say, say that again. Prayer. Pray. Oh, prayer is it. But what is the ultimate goal of altar work? To get the person saved. Yeah, bring them to Christ. Help them, lead them to Christ. 
lead them to a better situation, but lead them to Christ. To what do we say? We we evoke this statement: "Those who don't know Christ and the pardon of the sins, come now." We offer them Jesus. We offer them salvation through Jesus Christ. That all to work is the most important part in the church that we function in. And that's why it has to be sacred. That's why it has to be um, where people can concentrate on coming to the Lord. That's why we ask not a lot of movement. You know, people talk doing all to work instead of having a focus as they did in the upper room. They were on, in one place on one accord. They, they, you know, there was no bickering there because the Holy Spirit had time to come in like a, it said it rushed like a mighty Russian wind. And we can have those same experiences in our church. We have the same type of result in our church if we have concentrated effort from everybody, especially the leaders in the church. While we have altar call, you have people praying. You have people uh, uh, coming to Christ. And, and we, we may say, if you want Jesus to uh, forgive your sins, raise your hand, come on up. However we present Christ, or a way for them to, to come to Christ, we have to practice that. There's nothing wrong with practicing because practicing helps perfect or mature the church to a point that when people come in, alter, you know, they've heard, they've heard the singing, they may have heard testimony, they heard the word of God preached. Now, what, what is the finale? The finale should be people being delivered, set free, not just an altar call, but throughout the service that can happen. But the ultimate thing is to ask them to come to Christ. You have to, you have to, um, it's an, it's an appeal for us in regards to helping them to make that decision to admit their lives to Christ. So altar work is very, very important. Very important. Amen. Mm -hmm. Man. Very important. That's why we're talking about it tonight. That's why we, we're teaching about altar work and, and what, what is done uh, in this altar call. Also, altar call is, is not for the novice. Uh, the pastor uh, has, has the right to have whoever he or she needs up at altar because one of the things you don't want novice because let me tell you what the enemy will do. The enemy will try to sneak in an altar call and uh, affect what God is doing. He will try. And, and if you have somebody that that's, that's going through something or, and their mind's not focused on the work at the altar, uh, they can't, they can't have, they can't have effect on the, the uh, outcome of altar call for one person or, or everyone up there. I'm just saying if they're, if they're up there talking loud, come on, say you love the Lord. Come on. That's, that's out of order because God, God doesn't do things out of order. He does it in decency and order. So here's some of the things we're going to talk about. Uh, we're talking about the technical parts of altar. And it's not dogma. It's not something that... Um, is you know one of the things that I will tell you, everyone moving around doesn't help the altar call. So here's here's some things you want to jot down. Uh, you know, have do not have unpleasant breath doing altar work. Have a breath meant that you pop. Now don't come up with oh, yo. <laughs> you know, I mean, be be sensible. Uh, pop a mint, a tic tac, or something. Just make sure that we do nothing, and that's including especially me. I have to pop a tic tac or something because I don't want to get uh, somebody's focus on my breath uh, rather than their focus on their salvation. And that can happen because, again, they're, they're natural and they smell something natural. Okay. Don't do gumby going up there chewing. Come on, let me pray for you. No, uh, we have to do it with decency and order. But 
this is this is part of the the actual functionality uh, uh, or the technical piece of altar uh, work. Don't wear strong perfume or cologne where they they grimacing because it's burning eyes. Don't I mean that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that is something that we don't think about. Uh, I'm not saying don't use uh, cologne perfume. You're doing altar work. Don't be drenched in, in uh, perfume, cologne uh, on the days that you're coming up to, to pray to help it altar because it doesn't ha uh, help uh, have a, uh, a pleasant look, a welcoming look on your face up there doing altar work and you growling. Uh, something going on in your life that day, past I, I just you ain't got to get your business out there right now I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna serve I'm gonna I'm gonna sit this one out I'm not gonna say no no it's your it's your Sunday or whatever it's it's something that we don't think about that's distracting we should not bring any type of distraction you know we're in, you know real loud glittery uh clothes while you're preaching you know I got this, you know, wings on my on my robe and stuff like that to bring attention to myself. We're not supposed to do those kind of things, amen. Mm -hmm. Not supposed to. You're not supposed to bring the attention onto you, but bring the attention about Christ, and uh, they can be saved. They can have a refuge. Um, so don't. Also, don't place your hand to pray for someone unless you get eye contact and say, can I pray for you? Um, I know th there are a couple of people who don't want oil on them. Don't put oil on them. You, we really should be asking them, can, can I touch you? Can I, um, can I anoint you with oil? If they say no, just, just don't do it. Uh, I've seen people like, let me, let me do it anyway. No, don't do it. Um, don't look too, uh, too over eager either to hurry up and pray for them and, 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 and begin to just go into a frenzy of praying, you know, uh, let the, let the spirit lead you what to pray for. Um, when they tell you something and it's very private, uh, don't pray it out loud. Y'all hear me? Don't pray it out loud because they're coming to confide in you. They will tell you what, what you, uh, what they, what they want you to pray for. I'm saying if it's something very sensitive, don't pray it out loud. Now you bring exposure to the person. They're ashamed that you, you put it out loud. Uh, so let's be, let's be conscious on that. This is just some alter working uh, things that, you know, that go on and we don't think about it because some of us have been doing altar calls for so long and, and we're up there. I'm not, I'm just saying this is important. Those on Facebook, following along. Uh, and if you're not a part of PCCM, however you do it, your pastor uh, gives you instructions on doing it. That's how you do it. Um, if you're not uh, 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 pleasant smelling, Make sure your expression is still. I, if if they, I meant to say, if they're not uh, smelling too pleasantly, that can happen too. And I've had it happen many, many times. You can't be squinting your eyes and ran back, making noise like "whew." I mean, <laughs> I, I know it's, it might sound funny, but we are we have to refrain from that because it is a sacrifice to smell an odor because you, you, you're human, you're going to smell it, but we can't react to it. Um, you know, make sure your, your, your expression is still a pleasant expression. Uh, again, if you're using the oil, ask before you apply it to their heads, if you can put it on their forehead, uh, look them directly in the face while they are talking to you. Don't look down. Don't look away. Show them that you're interested in what they are up there for. Um, something else that the music. And I'll work with I'll work with uh, brother Jeff and brother Jr. When we're doing altar call, 
don't need loud music. It should be softly playing. It should be something that that's uh, engaging, uh, soothing. Uh, you know, uh, those are those are important things because loud music drum playing, organ playing, whatever the instrument is, can be distracting while they're trying to get a breakthrough. Uh, if someone falls on the floor, uh, we have to be careful. It's important that the men uh, that we designate to be up all to call to be uh, prepared for somebody, you know, the spirit moves upon them and they fall, they're still physical, they can hurt themselves. I know some will get real deep. Well, if, if it's of God and and and, uh, this, and if it's real, God won't allow that. Um, just help out in regards to making sure uh, women have to help out too because I'm getting to the next area about touching people. Uh, you have to be careful with that. So mm -hmm. just make sure that we are aware. Uh, if someone falls, you know, falls out, we have to make sure that we don't let them hit the floor and hurt themselves. And we thank the Lord. We have to, we have to make sure that uh, uh, they, you know, when they fall, especially a woman or man, we have to be ready. Missionaries and deacons and ministers and elders be ready to have something to cover them up with. That's important too. You have to cover them up make sure they're not exposing themselves because, you know, everybody in the sanctuary is not saved. And whether you're saved or not, it should not draw our attention away uh, that that person's laying there exposed. And because we are made of flesh and we have to, we have to, you know, make sure that we cover that person up. Uh, so that does not happen. If someone's overwhelmed and, and you see that, they may need uh, additional help. Sometimes you have to, you know, lead them to a seat and continue to pray with them outside of the altar, the at physical space. Sometimes you may have to go in a room. Now, one thing that I, I will tell you all, don't get into a, an emotional blubbering uh, with them. They need strength at the time. Let them... Uh, strong bear the infirmities of the weak at the time they're weak they they may be vulnerable to what they're going through and they're and they're breaking down crime uh you know <laughs> we don't we don't i may it, it's going to touch you in many cases what they're going through but you're not going to be able to help them if you're blubbering and, and crying too uh that that doesn't work um so you, you may have to escort them out of the, the sanctuary area uh, sometimes so they, they won't, uh, they, if they can't control themselves, we'll designate a place to do that. Uh, I'm not talking about if they just crying at the altar. Sometimes you, you have to leave them there and let God continue to work on them, let the spirit of God move upon them. Um, also elevate, I'm sorry, e evaluate the surroundings to see if it's okay uh, uh, for, for uh, you to uh, close your eyes while we're praying. Now, I know that's a, everybody can't have their eyes closed, right? What did it tell us in the word? It said some prayed and some did what? Watch. Watched. They watched uh, because there could be infiltration in the camp. And uh, what I mean by that, the enemy could be trying to use someone to bring a distraction to disrupt the flow of the service. And, and we can't, we can't um, go into a frenzy ourselves. Sit down. Don't be doing that. You, you see all to call. You have to do it with can. You have to do it with diplomacy. You have to do it in a godly way. Hey, hey, you all have to sit down because they're praying right now. And we need everybody on board. You have to teach. Uh, you have to, first of all, we have to be taught. And then we have to help disciple those who need to be taught. Everyone's not at the same level in the church. Uh, so that's important. Um, again, uh, you may not know what to pray for. So you ask them if they have any special prayer requests. 
if you're up there as a minister or or an elder or hey a deacon, if I ask you to pray for them, you need to know uh, what to pray for and how to pray and those kind. Of, when I say how to pray, uh, like I said earlier, not out loud and and you know making a spectacle of the prayer versus you know trying to move according to the spirit uh, as the spirit gives you the utterance to speak what God has given to you. Um, you can speak sometimes their finances, their health, their family, um, just having peace, a closer relationship with God. You'll get so many different requests for prayer. And, and uh, as, as uh, some of the men and women of God have taught me over the years, say, you know, pray strong, don't pray long. Uh, just pray as the, the spirit moves you to pray. And remember that you are not praying to impress anyone who can pray the loudest, who can pray the longest, articulate your words better, knowing, quoting every scripture in the Bible. I mean, that, that doesn't impress God. What impresses God is us having the heart uh, to pray for someone and their needs and, and making sure that they know it's not you, but we're praying unto God for whatever they need um, a victory in it, victory in their lives. So you're praying to God for that person and on behalf of that person. So this is one of the main reasons why people are uh, uncomfortable when they are praying for someone. Um, and we shouldn't be because if you've been called or appointed to do this, it means that God has authorized okay. you and I to pray for that person, to minister to that person uh, and, and again, it may not just be praying you're doing. You may have to talk to that person and, and, and um, making sure that we, again, go off to the side and not speak it out loud because you can bring them to a shame. All right. I've said a whole lot. Any, any questions or comments about uh, so far about the altar work that we have to do? So uh, with the altar work, the ushers are the first tier of what people see when they come into the church. So ushers, this is part of this is part of all to work too. The ushers have an incredible uh, job in making sure that uh, people are not moving or people are not moving around and people are not doing certain things that brings distractions. And it's a way, and this is I'm not going to go into a teaching. It's a way that the uh, the uh, usher should conduct themselves in letting people know that they they can't move. They can't, you know. Number one, they can't like put their hands on it, anyone, right? They can ask if someone becomes unruly is a way to to deal with that. Now, this is doing altar call any other time, but we're talking about altar work. Uh, making sure that they stand in certain places that signify that we're going through a, a serious, serious uh, ceremonial space in the service that this is important, the climax of the service. This could be in terms of people hearing the Lord's moved on them in the, in the uh, service. Now they're, they're ready to come up because you, you've offered Christ to them and offering Christ to them should be happening throughout the service with the choir, with the praise and worship team, and then with my preaching and everything else we do helps um, open up that opportunity. Like I said, they can come to the altar if the Lord, if the spirit moves them, uh, they may come before altar call is officially called, uh, but the altar is always open for people to lay upon. Um, but again, this is, this is, this has been protocol for churches uh, I'm, I'm not against protocol. There should be decency and order in the house. So th this is very, these things are very, very important. Now, uh, remember that you are not praying to impress people. I said that, right? Uh, we have to make sure that we're, we're praying as the, as the spirit gives us the utterance to pray what we need to pray if they don't tell us what to pray for. Now, uh, so don't pray loud and with words that people don't understand. 
try to refrain from speaking in tongues when you are praying. What do I mean by that? Anybody help me with that? Why would I say that? Because the person, Go ahead, the person would not understand what you're saying. That's exactly why. Mm -hmm. And this, and again, God says so too. Jesus be in order, doesn't he? Yeah, right. The Bible, the Bible says so too. Paul talked about that. That's right. That that's exactly right. We're gonna we're gonna go to some some Bible to uh, tonight. These again, we, the technical part of, of altar work. But you're exact. You both exactly right. You have that's how. Uh, also, uh, you know, I don't know if you're going to touch on it or not, but, you know, it's like something that, that happens Sunday um, when we when we're working the altar. And at times, you know, sometimes it takes a discernment when to leave a person alone, when the, when the spirit is ministering to them. But sometimes we can carry on a little bit more because of what we see that person, you know, they, they, how, how they respond to the prayer. And sometimes we think we're helping them, but but we're kind of hindering because we're not allowing the spirit to minister to that individual. Right. And sometimes we ought to know how to back off. Like you, you did, you, you told, you know, you know, you know, in a, in a, a kind way, let the spirit, let the spirit minister to them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Cause at some point and, and, and they weren't doing anything wrong. Uh, but I, I saw where God was trying to elevate it to a different level mm -hmm. of, human intervention now let god intervene yeah um, yeah so so that was i mean that those are the kind of things we have to help each other on if if we see that kindly you know uh we, we're co-laborers in christ kindly let some you know let that person know because we can be overzealous sometimes because mm -hmm. we really want and it's not because we have bad intent we really want to see the person come through yeah and, yeah. and uh, that that but also going back to the heaven language um, you know, they don't understand it. Remember, they don't have the Holy Spirit. So they don't understand what you're doing. They, you're like, what kind of, what kind of thing am I in? They have no understanding what tongues mean in, most, in some cases. Um, so, and then opposite sex, praying tips. I, some of this I agree with, so, and some, a lot of this stuff I'm, I'm talking about from experience, and, and from what I've been taught. So times have changed. Wouldn't you all agree? Amen. So men and women, be careful how you minister to the opposite sex. No rubbing. No touching certain parts of the body. Now, if the Holy Spirit leads you to touch on a certain area, chest, legs, you place that person's hand over that infirmity. That's what we should be doing. Now, I would say that times have changed or things are more uh, um, uh, exposed in regards to um, men and women relationships. And this may have to go for men and women. It has nothing to do with opposite sex. It's just touching people in general. Uh, you know, so we have to place that person's hands on that infirmity. Sometimes I'll call, like if it's a woman, I'll call my wife, I'll call Mother Melton or Missionary Pat, hey, touch them right here. Um, and let's pray for them, right? Uh, we, we just have to be very mindful. Uh, men should pray, generally pray for men. Um, women should pray for women, but in certain situations that, that can't happen uh, because of who we have at the time or, or how many people we have up there at the time. So here's the, here's the, 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 uh, the train of thought that we have to keep, that how we touch people, here are the areas we, we should touch. Uh, if you're a man and you're praying for a woman, the forehead with permission. Can I pray for you? Can I touch your forehead? I mean, we don't consciously do it. We uh, uh, we we actually we actually do it and don't ask for permission, right? But we should be asking for permission. 
Um, if a situation presents uh, self to pray with the opposite sex, just be mindful. Um, hugging, and I've done this before. I've done it many times. It could be inappropriate because people will allow the enemy as innocently as it might be from you and I could accuse us uh, in su certain ways. Because remember, everybody is not saved. So we have to be very careful in terms of praying. I'm, I'm talking about while we're doing altar work. Um, if they need to be hugged while they're in altar work and it's a woman, I'm going to call somebody else. Men, follow suit on that. That if you're up there praying, let somebody else hug them. Now, if it's a if it's with a small family church, uh, right now, uh, your family member come up, you praying for them. That's something different. Uh, but I would I would go along the the line of do it across the board because there's another time that you can do that privately if you have that relationship with someone. Amen. 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 Uh, and never, and never uh, praying for someone alone when they look threatening or off balance. Bring somebody. I'm, I'm, and this is all to work because we could we could be isolated. All of us up there doing all to work. If somebody looks impaired, intoxicated, uh, or again look threatening in some kind of way, that's not being that's not being. Uh, uh, a scaredy cat or whatever you want to call it that's being wise because I've seen people uh, wanting to fight at the altar because they're intoxicated. I've, I've seen this. We all have seen certain things all to work because uh, the enemy, he don't care. He will try to come in anywhere he thinks he can disrupt the move of God. <laughs> so we have to we have to understand that when we're doing altar work, we have to have the have to have it all in position where people can freely come to the altar. It's inviting. It's not threatening. It's it's something that they know when they come up, they're going to get a breakthrough. Their expectation is to feel something instead of being filled. And where our expectation is that the Lord fill them with the Holy Spirit, okay? Any questions? Anybody ha has anything they want to add in? <laughs> Any questions about all to work? And, and you may say, I know, you, I know someone has a question about how we do it, uh, what they've seen uh, while we go to all to work in the in the Bible. Any anybody have any questions and you're not afraid to bring it out so we can learn and teach? I just want to say about the hugging part. Uh huh. As uh, we as women, um, hugging someone as far as the opposite sex, turning yourself to a certain way that you're not, you know, breast to chest. However. To a uh -huh. sideways hug, you know, is um, the best way. Don't go directly up and give that person a chance to grab you and pull you forward. You tilt to the side and give a little pat on the shoulder, like, you know, is the best way I found <laughs> to, to hug and kind of like how we were taught. I was taught anyway in the church. So you don't have to worry about that because I had that happen to me. Of course, mm -hmm. I won't say a person, uh, the person who it was, but I was grabbed that way. Um, and that taught me a lesson from that point on. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, I understand, I understand that uh, in terms of the half, the shake, half hug sideways. What I'm, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is at, at partakers, let's not hug unless it's the example I gave, and even that, I would deter from that because across the board, it's like, wow, wow, she hugged, she hugged him, but didn't hug her. 
you, you, y'all get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. If, if yeah. we're all of us consistently doing the same thing, then there's no, because people look at things like that. Uh, yeah. in, in that way, it's no respect a person. Um, it's it's uh, something that is expected in terms of how we do things. People begin to come, they bring their friends, invite them to the um, to the church. <coughs> so anyway, let's talk about altars in the Bible. Uh, I was, I was, okay, somebody, okay, go ahead. About the hugging, since we are still dealing with the COVID situation, yes. is it a good idea to even hug anyway? Amen. Thanks, Mother, for throwing that in there. And as Mother said, I think people are, are more conscious about hugging. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. or, or not hugging. <laughs> right. Um, not hugging. Yeah. 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 So so you're you're right in that regard. So yeah. Somebody yeah, else would like to say something. Yeah, I was I was gonna mention because you, you mentioned something about uh you know working all the you know in a sense where people sometimes may uh you know fall out in a sense. And you mentioned the men, you know, because a lot of time it's women that do it. So, you know, we have to make sure that uh, if we, we don't want them because you, you've experienced it and, oh, and we yeah. experienced a lot in Little Rock where we let people hit the floor. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, we don't know how the spirit may deal with that individual. So you got to be prepared to uh, prevent that from happening. And, and even in the event of preventing that from happening, you got to be careful where you put your hands when that person's falling, because everybody that's falling ain't ain't slain in the spirit some people some people fall just to you know because of you know emotional and you touch or grab or you know something in the wrong spot and next thing you know they're trying to say something negative about it so you got to be careful with that you have to be very careful uh uh, i can't stress that enough that's why it's important for men and women to be at altar call around uh, a woman and again two women on the side of a woman being prayed for is, is the preference I would like uh, to have in the church with a man standing behind just in case. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will tell yeah. you, I will tell you this, and I'm not trying to, I am not trying to be funny. I'm going to, I'm going to start with this. A lot of times, uh, well, not a lot of times, but on occasion you may get someone that's heavyweight, oh. weighty. Yeah. Yeah, I've had it where I've caught someone and I felt the pain in my back later. Yes, um, because I had had nobody else up there with me. Mm -hmm. Um, And and we have to be, hey, we're we're made of flesh and 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 bones and muscles and ligaments, right? So Mm -hmm. it's not. If you see that, if you up there praying for someone, you see wave to altar work or somebody else to come help or politely shift them towards the chair area up front. Mm-hmm. And you may have to pray for them sitting down. I, I, I know that sounds strange and not orthodox, but if we know, because certain, how can I say this? Well, I say it with the truth. We know some some people are going to do the same. It's the same thing every time they come up for altar. They're going to get emotional. Yeah. And and they're going to pretty much do that, you know, lay out or something like that, you know, to allow God to to do something to them. So we have to be just be wise. So we, we have to we have to depend on each other while we're working the altar. I want to say while we was at Little Rock one time, I was there and the lady started shouting and I got tripped up and 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 I fell on the floor. Yeah. Yes. And I'm, I'm old for that now with his knee problems and stuff. So I don't want to take no chances. And that's why a lot of times I just stand back and just be there to hand some tissues or something like that. Because at my age now, I don't need to be breaking hips and stuff. Me, me, me either, mother. Me I either. think that's a lot of us at, at, at our age now. Yeah, yeah. right. And, and I, I hate to say at Little Rock, but at Little Rock, um, I remember a, a friend of mine, she was getting prayed for, and uh, the pastor was praying. Um, and he laid hands on her, 
and she didn't go down. So he pushed me. He was pushing on her till she, she mm -hmm. got caught up and her foot went on, her toes went on and broke her toe. Oh, Lord. Mm. Yeah. So she was in a cast for a while. She had to go straight to the hospital. Mm. Yeah, we have to be conscious. We're not putting on a performance, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. We're trying to help people uh, become delivered through the Lord, accepting the Lord. So it's not about us. It's really about them. Uh, it's, so it's, it's, it's when you when you said that, I'm, I won't say the uh, pastor name. He's a well-known pastor. Thank you. He, he, he's, he's a well-known pastor. Um, uh, well, well, prophet, prophet, he calls himself. But anyway, um, he he uh, was praying for he was praying for people and everyone was dropping. He went to go pray for, pray for someone else and he said he told this person you're stubborn in your spirit. And mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so you gonna help him? He, he, he said you're stubborn in your spirit. You trying to stay up? You trying to lock? See, he got mad. He said you locked your knees. And <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. But but I, I was just saying it to say you you're right. You know. When, when I thought I thought that was fleshly of him because if if you felt that way why don't why don't you 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 just you just keep moving I I don't I don't see the spirit the spirit of God is is not like that love love I, I see love I I don't see that that's 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 my only that was my only point yeah <laughs> but the 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 altar itself is a place of consecration okay to the Lord um, and then even before the time of Moses. Um, when the Lord gave the law to Moses, men made altars out of available materials. Uh, those altars, were they were built to commemorate an uh, encounter with the Lord and to signify the event between the Lord and man at the, that time. Uh, the relationship was different at that time. Basically the same, but different. Uh, we're talking Old Testament. So let's let's grab a few Bible verses here, the examples of the altars and all the, all the men that built the altars and worshiped the Lord uh, at these altars. And I'm talking about the physical altars now, but they're a spiritual altar too. So we, we won't get into that much tonight, but let's go to uh, Genesis 12, 7. Somebody read that for us. Genesis 12, 7. Genesis 12, 7. Uh, and the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there build he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. Okay, Genesis 26, chapter 26, verses 24 through 25. These are examples of altars being built. Twenty-six, uh, twenty-four, and twenty-five. Yes, ma'am. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night and said, "I am the God of Abraham, thy father. Fear not, for I am with thee, and I will bless thee and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sake." And he built an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's servants dig a well. Another example, Genesis 35, 5. Genesis 35, 5. And they and journeyed. They, go ahead. I yield. And they journeyed. And the terror of God was upon the cities that were around about them, and they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Okay, did I get? Let me see. I give you the right one. Uh, oh, keep reading to seven. I'm sorry. Okay. So six. So Jacob came to lose, lose or lose, 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 which is in the land of Canaan. That is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built them, he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel because 
there God appear unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. Okay. And last one. Um, I, I'm sorry. Actually, I have two more. First Chronicles 21. First Chronicles 21, verse 26. First Chronicles. Somebody can read that. Twenty one twenty six. So David gave to or nine for the place six hundred shackles of gold by weight. Uh, twenty yeah twenty yeah twenty one twenty twenty six twenty six. And David built there an altar unto the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings and called upon the Lord. And he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offering. Okay. And then last one, Judges 624. And then Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah. Shalom. Until this day, it is yet in Oprah of the Abrazites. Okay. Just all examples of altars being built unto the Lord for the work uh, that God was doing in their lives or the, the relationship that they had with the Lord. Uh, examples of where men and women uh, built altars unto the Lord. Okay, so during the time of Israel's uh, rebellion and idolatry, altars began to fall into uh, disrepair. Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel and repaired the altar of the Lord, which had been torn down. So today we look at the altar in the church. That's why altar work uh, is important. We basically, uh, the way we do altar call and able to lift up uh, the Lord from the earth is keeping that time sacred, keeping it consecrated where we're doing a work. That's why we don't need talking and moving and, and people attention on games and phones and tablets where we're doing, or now you want to read your Bible doing altar work, well, read your Bible at home doing that, you know, that time is just sacred. It's, it's a concentrated time. And we come together on one accord. I'm telling you, I believe this. When the church, and I'm just not saying partakers, but when the body of Christ gets on one accord and there's all, their different, all the different churches out here, God will begin to move upon flesh. He'll begin to help uh, move in people's lives and bringing people to Christ and allowing people to be redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ to, to be saved. And, and we, we thank the Lord for everyone in the church is important. But what, what happens is the enemy knows that if we get on one accord, that we'll do like the 12 disciples and turn the world upside down. He knows that. That's why he brings division in the, in the, in the church house and in, in our individual houses, because he knows if we come together, we're going to excel. We're going to we're going, to, we're going to progress victoriously. So it's, it's important uh, that we make sure that the altar work is being done properly. That's, that's the pastor's job to call it out. It's all of our jobs to work together to ensure that uh, it's a, a pleasant experience for those who don't know Christ, for those who do know Christ. Sometimes it's somebody that's saved and they just need some a prayer of encouragement, uh, a prayer of uh, uh, a recommitment to their lives uh, towards the Lord, and 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 uh, we have to make sure that we're doing it with 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 excellence. Uh, not again, not dogma, not not legalistic type stuff, but I'm saying doing as the Spirit leads us, but with the decency and order of the actual operation of of altar work. And, and when we make the altar call, it's something that can be, be received by the person who's coming up. 
They receive that. It's going to be a secret, a, a, a sacred place that they can come to and get a breakthrough. So it's very important that we, we remember altar work is so, so important. Uh, the Lord sometimes commanded altars to be built after he had amazingly delivered someone. So those are those to me are spiritual altars in your life or in your home uh, where God has brought you from a mighty long way, me from a mighty long way. Now, my altar unto the Lord is a place where, you know, it could be your secret closet. It could be your place of, of uh, devotion and meditation, but it's unto the Lord. Let us go see an example of this. Uh, in Exodus 30, somebody get Exodus 30 and 1, Deuteronomy 27, verses 4 through 7. And let's look at after someone's been delivered, an altar was constructed unto the Lord. Okay, Exodus 30 and 1. Somebody have that? And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of uh, shittim wood. Uh, shalt thou make it? And that's it. Yeah. So before that, if you read that, they had God delivered them mm -hmm. uh, from out of uh, some things that they felt a dedication unto the Lord in building this altar. Just like today, that's what we should be doing: dedicating our time, our prayer. Before we, before we even come to church and, and doing church, it all starts with prayer. Everything starts with prayer uh, to help consecrate our, ourselves to do the work unto the Lord, because that's, that's how we serve uh, in the church. That's part of our service in the church, making sure that we are uh, presenting uh, an altar again that receives people no matter, you know, the statement, come as you are, that's what it's talking about. Whatever the condition of their heart can come into the house of God and also to the altar to bring those things and cast them upon the Lord. All we are instruments being used of God to, uh, to, to, the, uh, to the perfection of, and when I say perfection, I'm talking about maturity of the saints, that we are working ministering to help others uh, come into Christ. Deuteronomy, somebody read that one. Deuteronomy 27, verses 4 through 7. Mm -hmm. Therefore it shall be when ye go over Jordan that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster, plaster them with plaster, and there shall thy build an altar unto the Lord thy God, an altar of stones. Thou shall not lift up any iron tool upon them. Thou shall build the altar of the Lord thy God of whole stones, and thou shall offer burnt offerings thereon unto the Lord thy God, and thou shall offer peace offerings and shall eat there and rejoice before the Lord thy God. Amen. We thank the Lord for the reading, Mother. Basically, God was saying, I don't need you to shine nothing up. I don't need you to cut anything in a particular mm -hmm. shape. I don't need you to do all that. Here's what you do. Get these natural stones and create an altar. This place where people can come unto the Lord and uh, except <clears throat> God as their as as their as their God, the people of God, uh, they made sacrifices that the Lord uh, God accepted as their atonement for sin. Right, uh, that was back then, and then as we fast forward, Jesus uh, made the atonement for us. So this was this was also a time. Uh, uh, where you know the altar was to have four horns. That uh, this is this is outside of the natural altar that was built. There was also altars built in a certain way. The altar was to have four horn-like projections with one at each corner, 
and to be large enough to hold bulls, sheep, and goats to be used for sacrifices. When Solomon built the altar, it was made of what? Somebody tell me. What was it made of? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, he built, you say I, I gave you a description of, of how it was built. It was Solomon. What was it built of? It was of pure gold. Okay. <laughs> pure gold. Um, so let's let's go to First Kings seven forty eight. Somebody read that for us. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertained unto the house of the Lord, the altar of gold, and the table of gold, whereupon the showbread was. So, pure gold. So an altar, an altar, I'm talking about the place now. If I use a general term for altar, um, it's a designed place where people consecrate themselves unto the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about today. Uh, churches have altars for prayer, for communion, for weddings, and other purposes. Um, some Christians use their altars for personal worship. As a reminder of Romans, somebody go get 12.1. Romans 12.1, we'll finish up with that. Romans 12.1? Yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A place where we understand that we are living sacrifice those sacrifices back then they weren't living they were dead bulls and cows and lambs and but we're living sacrifices meaning we gave up the old man and now we're walking in the newness of christ so therefore our the things that we used to do were laid on the altar and we're talking in a spiritual sense but it was laid up upon the altar and God took those things away from us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to atone for our sins. So therefore, we are living sacrifices. That means that we're holy and acceptable because we gave up that old man. Somebody need to get happy about that. We gave up that old man. And now we walk in the newness of Christ. We thank the Lord. It is now 828. Uh, there's more we're going to teach on next week. We're going to finish up next week. I thought I was going to finish up today, but we're going to continue to talk about, uh, get more into uh, the altar uh, work, a little more specific to uh, not just what we do and how we do, uh, more into why we do, backed up with the scripture, uh, I, I've done a little bit of that today, but I didn't finish it uh, to, to get an understanding of uh, the functions of the altar in, in, uh, in the Bible, too. I kind of touched on that, too. You know, back then they used to use incense and, and different fragrances, things of that nature. We don't do that today uh, because our, our fragrances, our fragrance and, and, and smell is what? The Holy Spirit, right? They they burnt incense, the smoke, and, and and those kind of things that that symbolically represented uh, things being being uh, burnt at the altar. I'm talking about with the with the fire burning of the of the sheep or goat or whatever it was. Um, we don't do that today, and it's the reason we don't do it. We're going to get into that next week all right all right we thank the lord for you it's 829 
We thank the Lord for everyone in the Zoom room. We had a good uh, showing on tonight Bible study. I'm telling you, if more people get in tune to Bible study, God will release a thing in us that, oh my gosh, it won't be recognized from people you used to hang out with. And they'll see you, they know you had a change because the word is working from the inside out. And as I said, Sunday, this is an inside job. And that's why we have to get this worry hidden in our hearts that we won't sin against God and God can uh, allow us to do greater works. We thank the Lord, but we're going to need something on the inside, the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit needs something to operate with. And that is the word of God. We thank the Lord. All right. On tomorrow night, we have uh, TMP Thursday night praise with Minister Derek Isaac, 7 to 720. And then at eight o'clock, we have our Thursday, the corporate prayer on Thursday night. We've been doing that now for nine years. We thank the Lord. Time flies. Uh, I believe this, the past month of February made nine years, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but we have been doing this for a while. Uh, my math could be off a little bit. But nevertheless, let's continue on uh, because we need to help win souls to the kingdom. And when we come together and we intercede for others corporately and the things that's going on in the world, I believe that God will begin to bring earthly interference uh, to these things that's happening from heaven. He will bring earthly interference and begin to uh, eradicate or remove these things that hinder his people from uh, being closer with him. We thank the Lord. On uh, Also on uh, Saturday, oh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yes, yes. On uh, Saturday at 9 a.m., 9 a.m., we're having an all-men's prayer breakfast. We thank the Lord. Uh, we look forward. <clears throat> Uh, our guest speaker is Elder Frank Johnson of First Church. We thank the Lord for uh, his pastor releasing him for this assignment. We thank the Lord for all the men who uh, are coming out to help with this uh, fellowship and breaking of bread, natural and spiritual bread. We thank uh, the Lord. I, I get excited about the prayer breakfast every year. We're going to consistently, by the grace of God, to have it. Because we, God has showed up and showed out when we've had it. And we thank the Lord. It's not too late to get your, uh, your, your ticket. The, the donation is only $10. Uh, you can come to the door and pay for it if you don't have your ticket uh, by now. But I'm telling you, you don't want to miss uh, Derek's famous fried potatoes. And we thank the Lord. Uh, we have some other special dishes. I, I I don't know if he's making that or not, but anyway, we're going to have a good time in the Lord. Uh, I, I heard him swallow hard, so that's why I say what I said, uh, but we're going to have a good time. Good food, good fellowship, uh, a good way for men to come together, and it's in person. Last year, we had it uh, Zoom virtually. It's just not the same. Uh, it's just not the same. We can see your brother's in Christ, and we can we can talk about some things uh, while the women are not around to help be better husbands and better fathers and better brothers and better friends and better co-workers. We can kind of talk openly about some things to help uh, the, the totality of the body of Christ of the men and women. And so I look forward. So again, that's at 4516 Beach Road, in Temple Hills, Maryland, at Partakers Church of Christ Ministries. It's going to be at the church. Uh, we are going to start at 9 a.m. sharp. Get there because I tell you, the appetites come in. They enjoy the food. And they enjoy the word, most of all. So God bless you on tonight. Uh, if I, Anybody, did I miss anything? Oh, Sunday morning, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Sunday school on Zoom and Facebook. Join us then. And also at 11 o'clock at the church, at the sanctuary, God is beginning to really move and bring people back to church. I, I'm excited about that. And uh, it's, it's nothing like it. I mean, church is okay on Zoom. No, I'm not going to, hey, God, thank God for that, uh, that form too. 
but man, it's nothing like assembling ourselves together. And, and you know, iron sharpeneth iron. We thank the Lord. We're still uh, continuing to be safe. I know a lot of people gotten lax and, and not lax, but gone to a, a model of, hey, masks are optional. Where right now, partakers, they're not optional. So just let you know, uh, unless you're singing, preaching, or eating on Saturday, you know, we have to mask up. Uh, and that's, you know, we thank the Lord. God's going to <clears throat> begin to move this completely out the way where we can come back together like we uh, were before, you know, pre-pandemic. So I'm excited. I don't know about you all. I'm excited about the journey. You know, the, the you know, I, I know that it seems like the journey gets tough, but something about the journey to get to the place you need to get to, the journey is the exciting part because you can see God move. Once you get to the place that you set a goal or objective to get to, you get there and you kind of plateaued out like, oh, man, I finally got this degree. Oh, man, I finally, you know, uh, got this this car or whatever. But it's the journey that you have to appreciate and enjoy and endure because you see the hand of God move in it. I don't know about it. I'm about to go off on a tangent because I'm getting excited again. All right. God bless everyone. We thank the Lord for you. I'm going to ask Minister uh, Isaac to uh, close us out with prayer. We thank the Lord. Okay. Um, so if, if you're listening, make sure you're there. Uh, if you're a man, make sure you're there on, on Saturday at nine because my, my potatoes are famous, but that's it. <laughs> <laughs> we thank the Lord. <laughs> Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this Bible study. Thank you for what we've heard on tonight, Father God. God, continue to bless us throughout this week, Father God, and we thank you for keeping us, Father God. God, continue to bless us this work, rest of work week and be, be biased and protect us. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, Junior. Hey, Junior. How you doing, Junior? My name's sake. We thank the Lord. God bless everyone. Love you all. Bless. God bless you. Well, praise God. Right, God bless y'all. All right. We'll talk to you all on Saturday, men and women. We're not going to exclude you. We know you can't come on Saturday, but send your brother, your daddies, whoever, you know, send a man to this event and they'll come back changed. I guarantee you. God bless Amen. you. Amen. Amen. My husband. <laughs> oh, Lord. They're they, they, they going to gain a little more weight. <laughs> Ask to go and make French toast, I think. Uh, uh, no, don't put that on me. Don't put that on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> we thank the Lord. No, but we, we'll see. We thank the Lord. God bless you all. Good Amen. night. God bless. Good night. <laughs>